What's up, y'all? Got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. Art of chasing does not exist mm -hmm. anymore. What the about art the fart of chasing? <laughs> How about that? Art of proper courting a woman does not exist anymore. I agree. Yeah. And I just here's the reason why. It's because women aren't as traditional as they used to be. Traditional women get courted. Modern women don't. Want to feel like desired. a girl. feminine. Oh, I want to feel like the feel feminine like... energy, not the masculine no. energy. And I'll tell you this. I want to feel like if he has me. His eyes aren't wandering if there's something better. I want him to be like, whoa, you are it. That's fucking amazing. And that's it. I just mm -hmm. want to, you know what I want? My type of guy, call me back. That's all I want. No, wait, they I call mean, you back. Okay, so yeah, here's, I'm, I'm actually writing a book about a lot of the things that you. Y'all buying the book? You just said. Mm. And the energy, I think, to give off, to get that, because it is rare, but yes. it's out there is you are lucky to be in my presence. I still, in we've known each other since we were 12, give off that energy. Whoa. Like, if you go <laughs> if you go away from me, like, you don't get access to this. Yes. You like don't it. get yes. access to this personality. You don't get access to these boobs. Mm -hmm. You don't get access mm -hmm. to this no, witty, funny, true. charming personality. They should be so lucky. Men are born hunter-gatherers. They are literally the lion looking for prey. And if you're just the gazelle that walks into his mouth, He's not going to want it because he didn't have to work for it. He didn't have to try for it. There's no effort that he had to put in. And I love it. It's always single women giving the absolute worst advice. <laughs> <laughs> None of y'all got a man. Even if y'all were a lioness or a Giselle, y'all still ain't got no man. I I, I want to be a sprinting gazelle. I don't want to walk right in there. I G did I say Giselle? <laughs> gazelle, I'm stupid, bro. I have to say that Sistine and I were very masculine in our career so we're very much someone that see there you go right there you're very masculine in your career masculine men want feminine women not masculine women you just self-admitted there that you're pretty much out of the runnings yeah. loves to be go-getters we're love to plan things we are the loudest usually in the room with our friends we have the most jokes we like to just hold an audience but when it comes to a relationship, we want that to be taken away from us and have a guy that's be in true. control and but so the thing is that's who you are at your core that's your personality is to be this masculine, go-getter, funny girl, center of attention, wants to lead everything. Guys want women that they can lead, not women that want to lead them. I think that's been the hardest part is a lot of these guys that we go on dates with, they forget the balance and the dynamic and they kind of give it to us. And unfortunately, it's easy for us to take it. All right. Here's the... It's the same with these boss babe women. They will probably be alone in their later lives. They don't understand that men... At our core, we want a feminine, gentle, submissive, fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive woman. We don't want a woman that's combative, that's masculine. That's why you see all these women that are like fit and feminine and friendly. They usually got a man. It's all these masculine, ca career-driven women that don't have a man. And it's like, well, don't be mad at us as far as men. Don't be mad at men for liking what we like. We like feminine women. Be mad because you don't fit the mold. So go change it. If the common denominator in all your failed relationships is you, maybe you should change something, dude. Why the f My oil change was $60. $60. Hmm. First time? Okay, so I'm only, I'm under the impression, okay, and I really belong, I really think this, I really f this. When someone is stating that, from the very beginning, a person knows that whatever is going to follow must be just amazing but like pretty should not have to pay for their bills or the maintenance on their car i really quite genuinely hope that they're joking because i don't know if you guys know about pretty privilege but people that are pretty just should have a better life than everybody else i'm going to say it again who said he was pretty fired. i genuinely hope that this person is not being serious but the thing to remember is is that even if this person is saying these things for simple engagement there are quite a large number of individuals that actually share this mentality in which they believe that by virtue of how attractive a person is means that they should have to not pay for the things in their life that regular people do kind of makes you wonder who's going to be paying for it doesn't it i know that sounds vain but from one pretty it sounds vain it sounds entitled the other the pretty but it and the other people, not so much. Oh, that's nice. But I think we can all take some solace in the fact that time for everyone continues to march on and eventually it catches up. All right, let's break this. I mean, 
Lady J always base, bro. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. Cases. And if you do end up working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. I get this a lot, but is there any way I could get your number? Uh, I'm sorry, it's gonna be enough for me. Why? Just I just started dating this girl. Uh, it's getting pretty serious. I don't mean any offense oh. by it. It's just that it's getting serious. I don't want to like mess with that at Good all. So. She doesn't have to know necessarily. She's a runner. She's a track star. How about new? You know. Um, could unfortunately, now you said that she kind of does. Get your number and you can you know change my contact name and you know it could be totally fine. <laughs> it's you know? a funny thought. I have... <laughs> I, 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 you know look, the drill. You know the drill. Yeah. No. I. It's. You know the drill. He's trying to be faithful to this girl. Lord have mercy. Cool, I get that. I'm just like, it's not really my thing. Um, she's been great to me. I'm gonna be great back to her. It's just where I'm at right now. So again, I appreciate it. Don't mean any offense by it, but I'm gonna well, I'm kinda go. Well, I'm kind of taking offense by it. I mean, normally when I ask guys for their numbers, they give it to me, so I'm just like a little confused. Women cannot handle this rejection, bro. <laughs> I am taking an extreme offense by it. This is a prime example of a woman that doesn't understand that this is most men. I said it, most men are good men. But there are so many women out there that believe- Say it again for the ones in the back. Most men are good men. I completely agree with that. The opposite. This is clearly one of them because she just cannot understand his answers. And I think that it is clearly reflective of her own values. So much so that even if that man didn't have a girlfriend, he would have lost all potential attraction. All right, let's get in. I mean, she's got a point. And I've, I like to believe that most women are good women. I feel like the women that we react to most of the time on these on, on the channel here is that these are like the modern women that are alone and they're on TikTok. But we always got to remember the exception does not make the rule. And I like to believe that there are more based women out there than, than women that think like this. But I could be wrong. Chat, let me know. Do you think that's the case? I just think it's the women that are the modern women that are on social media talking about this stuff a lot. So it gets a lot more publicity. But there's a lot of based women out there. Based women typically aren't on social media. They're not ranting online. They don't have failed relationships, etc. I'm convinced you guys don't have jobs. I'm convinced you guys don't get enough sleep at night. <laughs> and I'm convinced you are just not in a healthy mindset. What do you mean you fucking talking to eight people? Are you okay? For real. <laughs> do you need some fucking water? That is the strangest shit to me. What do you mean you're talking to eight people? There's seven days out of the week. What's going on here? Here's the real talk. Uh, rosters are crazy, bro. Especially when a girl has a roster and I'm just like... She's a runner. She's a track star. That's what that tells me. You just can't find a man that's actually a value that wants to take you serious. I mean, it is what it is. I think women should never have rosters. I think men, you can. Um, at least I did in college when I was dating. But the thing is, is when I had a roster, I wasn't taking none of them serious. But as I got older, I didn't really want a roster. I just wanted like a girl that I could actually be like, you know, all right, this is my girl. I'm getting in a relationship with her. Or we talked about it beforehand and we said, hey, we're getting into this getting to know each other stage because eventually at the end of this, I want a relationship, you know? Okay. I have a story for you, TikTok. And of course it involves the Facebook dating chronicles. Okay. So let's go back to like the end. Wait, Facebook has a dating. Th God, Facebook is dipping in everything, bruv. Of August, beginning of September. Um, you know, I've been on Facebook dating, been chit chatting here and there with these guys, you know, maybe trying to find a husband, but you know, obviously that's not going well. Okay. So let's talk about this one guy. So I matched with this guy. I'm just going to say his real name because I do not care. His name is Brian with a Y B R Y. Why are they doxing these men? I'm going to say his real name. Lord, man. 
I A N. Okay, again, that's Brian with the Y. Him and I match on Facebook dating. We chit chat here and there. You know, things are going good. We seem like we have a lot of common interests. A lot of the, like a lot of the same things. He's like, hey, can I get your number? You know, is that if that's cool? I, I want to text you. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. He says to me, you won't regret this. I'm sorry. That that is the most serial killer line right there. <laughs> you won't regret this. <laughs> He should have never said that. Yeah, it's a Obviously, weird. I regret this because here we are, right? Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, me and Brian, we start chit-chatting, this and that. He's like, you know, I'd really love to take you out. Are you available? We set up a time and date of when I'm available. You know, he picks a place. We get together. Cool. We meet about this place. Real cute, like, little lounge, restaurant-y place. Cute vibe. I whenever I go on a date I like to get there a little early just so I can kind of scope out what's going on in the restaurant where the exit signs um where the bathrooms what bartenders look like you know if any I actually agree with this take gents you should do the same exact thing bro thing happens I could go to them are there security guards this that and the third I just feel like with dating sometimes you have to make sure that you have all these things in place because gotta have an exit strategy you never know when you're gonna have to pull a Houdini and dip on out of there there's some psychos out there. So anyway, him and I, we get there, you know, we're chit chatting. We're having a really, really good time. We are finding we have a lot of common interests. We really um, want a lot of the same things out of life. We're talking about different goals, this, that, that there are values that we want and values that we have. She must be from the South because I've only met people from the South that say this, that, and the third. We're lining up, um, you know, we find out we both want to get married, have children, have a family. Things are going really well. So well that we decided to go to another bar after and, you know, sit and chit chat and have some fun to where we didn't even like leave there till they closed. So two in the morning, it was a, I think it was like a Friday night um, or maybe it was a Saturday night or something. No, I think it was a Friday night. We go out, had a great time. We're leaving. Um, again, things are lining up. Values are, you know, the same. Um, things are going really good, right? So he says to me. I love it when a woman gets to the point of the story. <laughs> I get it. You checked all the exits. You've been on this date for a minute. Get to the point. When we're leaving, he's like, you know, I really want to see you again. When can I see you again? I'm like, you know what? I had a really good time tonight. I want to see you again tomorrow night, which is very uncommon for me. Like, usually I have to go home, process everything, and think. She's going. She's going Jordan 90. What is it? 92, 93. She's going back to back on this man. About it. But things went really well. So I was like, okay, I can see you again. Let's do it tomorrow night. I'm available. So I knew he had a dog that he really, really loved and cared about. Um... <clears throat> So I was like, you know, how about, how about we go to like a dog bar? Um, we can go to the dog bar and we can sit, we can chit chat. He can run around and have fun. You know, we can still continue to talk. Now, let me just back up a little bit. Brian is, I believe he's 30. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, he's 31. Um, he's originally from the Bronx. He doesn't have any kids. He worked at a hospital. Just, just some background information you guys are going to need later on in this story. Why would we, why would we need all that? Um, that I just forgot to mention. So just remember those things. Um, so, you know, while this is all happening, we're sitting there, we're chit-chatting. And I think it was the first date. I remember saying to him, you know, because we were talking about like past relationships and things that like we've learned out of past relationships that we don't want to bring into our next relationship, different things like that. And I remember saying to him, is there anything else that I need to know about you? Because I find out everything. Okay. I find out everything. <laughs> Keyword. I'm a psycho. <laughs> I find out everything. She's the type of chick to go through your wallet when you bring her over to the crib. And she, <laughs> she <laughs> does like a background check on you, bro. And he's, I got this friend, Rebecca, in HR, and I'll find out everything. Like, oh, like, is that a threat? And I'm like, no, that's a promise. So I find out everything. So if there's anything I need to know, you're going to want to tell me. Okay, so just keep that in mind because you're going to need that little tidbit of information for later on in the story. So we go to the dog bar. We have a good time. Again, after that, we went to another place. Um, we're sitting there. It's till two in the morning. He's like, when can I see you again? The next day I had work. Um, I was like, well, maybe, you know, next week. Or actually, no, I think I did see him. It was the next night. I think it was like a Friday, Saturday. Nope, it was a Friday, Saturday, Monday. So basically dates. Good Lord, nobody cares about the days. Back to back to back, right? So the next day, the next day comes. We chit chat through the day. I'm working. I tell him where to go. He wanted to go out and go watch the games, this, that, and the third. Um, and then we get ready to for our third date, which I'm gonna have to make part two. So come back. Here's the thing, bro. Where's the part two at? I want to know what actually happened. I listen to all that to not even know what actually happened. Killing me. Deeper bro. than a few messages. Good lord. And if if he ghosted her, I actually can't blame him. If that's the way she was talking to her in the date, I probably would have ghosted her as well. Tried really hard to be attracted to men who, like, treat me well. It's boring. <laughs> it's not only boring, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. 
Can you believe that? It makes them uncomfortable to treat them well. This is why I say, gents, I do what works. I don't always do what's nice, man. It's crazy work. They're self-admitting. Self-admitting, but once again, these I'm hoping that these are a small percentage of women. I hope this is not like the majority of women out there that really think that a man that treats them bad is the guy they should go for and then be mad at all their failed relationships. You know what I mean? Relationship. It's as if they've... Tr <sighs> it's just so crazy to me. Like, I want him to treat me bad. It's the only way I actually like him is if he treat me, treats me like crap. <laughs> it's like, What? What? men understand that they should not take a woman into target with them the better off they're gonna be when they go in there and they say i just need one thing i'm like are you sure you want me to come in there with you because target is one of those places target tells me what i need i don't go in there with a plan i go in there with vibes and target lets me know bad decision to let your girl go with you to target don't do it all right let's unless you've got a base chick dude cass and i we'll go to target and we'll just get a coffee and walk around for 20 minutes, look at all the things that we may want, and then just leave. It's these modern women like this that are the consumer-driven, the capitalism-driven, and they're just influenced by capitalism and the fact that they need to just buy everything. It's like, avoid those women. Giving that man a hundred chances, because he's going to take them all and never change. Because I'm tired of seeing women fighting so hard for a situation that I can clearly see is going nowhere. How a man treats you is how he feels about you. It's not because he's got this stress going on or this drama going on or this incident has happened. It's because you have positioned yourself as someone who will accept and tolerate disrespect. So disrespect is what is going to be on the menu. And I think what we as women fail to understand is that once a man has categorized you in that category, you will stay. Stop thinking you can change these men's mind. You can't. Stop thinking that you can persuade these men to love you, to respect you, to prioritize you. If he's not doing it, then he's not going to do it because that is how he sees you. With all my love as your big sis, let me tell you the truth. He doesn't like you that much. He doesn't. He will sleep with you. He will let you spend time with him as entertainment, but he will never, never, ever, ever give you what you want. He will let you be around in the capacity that benefits him. And the more you ask from a man who doesn't want to give you more, the more you are going to piss him TF off. I actually agree with this take, as harsh as it may be. Loki, you want some beef jerky? Free? Sit? Go to your place. As men, we are simple creatures. And when we get into, this is either a friendship or a relationship with a woman, there's a foundation that's been set on how you're supposed to treat each other. Men operate usually on a scale of respect. Because with men, no matter what we say to each other, there's always a low level threat of violence, right? You get real out of pocket with a guy, this guy may pop you in the mouth. But with women, it's a lot different. Men and women, we operate on a level of love, right? A man to a woman, women want love, men want respect, right? So when this foundation is built on shaky ground or it's not a solid foundation and you let, and this is for men and women, you let a woman do certain things and get away with it in the beginning, more than likely, you're never gonna change that. The same thing is true with uh, women to men, right? Ladies, you let a guy get away with a lot of stuff in the beginning. Like I know people, I got close friends, they've been dating for a freaking decade. Longer than a decade, won't put a ring on her finger, right? But you know, and I've said, I've said stuff like, "Bro, where are you about to go? You ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere." But the thing is, they operate on that level of like, he knows that he's gonna get everything, everything out of her without the commitment of an engagement or making her his wife. He doesn't have to do it because she hasn't demanded that. She hasn't demanded that respect from him, and so he's like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna get all the benefits out of this without having to wife you up." Why would a guy wife you up if you're giving him everything that he wants? Why would he do it? He'd be like, what? Because like, what a guy's going to do, he's going to be logical about it. He's going to say, what else am I going to gain from wifing you that I don't already get now? You cook, you clean, you, you screw me, you bang me, you do all the things I want you to do in the sheets, you do everything I want you to do in the kitchen, you take care of the house. What's the, you're now just going to have a ring. I see this ring now as a liability, not an asset. You're not going nowhere. You've been with me for a decade. 
That's why, ladies, you almost kind of have to push your man sometimes to marry you because a lot of guys, like, if you're just going to let us do whatever and give us every single, like, every single perk of you being a wife as a girlfriend, then why would we marry you? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, so I kind of agree with that take. As bad as it is, but it's just how it is. Men, we're simple creatures. We're like, all right, this is where we're at. We operate on this level of respect. I'm giving you this. You're giving me that. Why would I want to wife you? I get that. Now, some men want to just get married. I knew one day I wanted to be married. Because I knew one day I wanted to have a family, but it didn't really take any pushing from me. But I also didn't push it to Cass. It was kind of like something we discussed over time. We communicated and we're like, all right, now we're ready, right? We had our finances together. We owned a home. We had a dog. We were in a, a good place financially. That was the biggest thing. It's like, can we get our finances together? Because like things are expensive, you know, like getting a ring and investing in these things, investing in a home. But what we did is we were like, let's get a home first, let's get some debts paid off, and then let's do this. We had a really long-term vision. We knew we wanted to be married eventually, but we talked about it. And I feel like a lot of couples, they don't even communicate with each other. They don't even talk about this stuff. And then when a girl brings it up to a guy, he just gets mad. And it's like, well, he's like, well, why would you even bring this up? You haven't brought it up before. So you always got to begin with the end in mind with any relationship you've been in. And this is with a friendship. This is with a romantic partner. Begin with the end in mind. Know what you want at the very end. That way you can always talk about it and be talking about this journey. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the two ebooks, the four pillars of personality and the four steps of style that make you irresistible to women and respected by men. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.